everybody listening to the Radio 1 Rock Show is probably aware that Metallica put out 72 seasons, a new studio album last week. So we're going to hear this in two parts now. First from James and Kirk. And I asked them to tell me a bit about the mindset in going into making the record in light of everything that had happened. Check it out. Going through what I did in my life and feeling pretty alone and then COVID happening and everyone feeling alone (laughs) really put into perspective what is important for sure and people in my life that I love that have supported me uh, and music. As a musician, you're either on tour or you're writing. So COVID chose that for us. Not that we ever stop, I don't think. I never do, I never stop. It is breathing for me. So yeah, sitting in a rental home, playing some songs and never not knowing what's gonna be happening with the world, is the band gonna ever tour again? All of these thoughts start coming in, you know? And yeah. But I was grateful that I had my guitar. <laughs> and a place to record some stuff and some way to get stuff out. Um, I started to need the connection with these guys. I just said to these guys, hey, every whatever Thursday at two o'clock, we're getting on Zoom, we got a chat. So every week we had a weekly like Metalla sit down, you know, and just checking in with each other. You know, how are you dealing with this? What are you doing? What's your family up to? How, you know, how how do you feel? You know, um, that was the beginning of kind of the, the, I guess, the brotherhood taking form and pretty soon, you know, the Black in 2020 thing idea came out. I sent it to those guys saying, hey, I'm bored. Uh, Throw something on this. And they didn't even know what it was. I just sent it to them. Mm -hmm. They did that and then we got together doing that and then the riff box opened (laughs) and then we started, you know, doing some riffs. You know, Lars and I were trying to figure out the latency on Zoom, how to write songs together um so again uh there's been some pretty devastating things that have happened uh to metallica in our career you know we've we've worked through a lot of uh uh, very dark and difficult times uh and this was just another one of them you know and we were able to see you know 72 seasons is the result of you know that little little sense of uh, yellow, little yellow hope, <laughs> in all of it. You know yeah. the, the the contrast of yellow and black. We had no idea what was going to happen, and that's usually how it is for us when we start writing a record. So, and that's the unknown fear and joy, uh, depending on what glasses you're wearing that day. You know. Yeah. And then eventually started getting back together, writing riffs on the floor together, playing songs, and it really opened our eyes to how much we care about this band, how much we care about touring, creating music, connecting with people. So hopefully that that shows in this record. I think with this record and lyrically, it's, it's always been from the heart, but it's not been trendy or, you know, current eventy, you know, it's mm. okay. Here's a current event that's happening how does it make me feel at the end of the day? How does it affect me? And how does it affect everyone else? You know, there's a common thread. You know, I think it was the right thing to do, to use that time, you know, as, as, as artists, as musicians, it was the right thing to do to seize that time and not let it slip away and be creative and positive with it. You know, we channeled our creativity, we channeled our energies, channeled our emotions, our frustrations, our angers, in the best possible way we could, you know, in retrospect. And, and you know, it was the thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> how, like, how far through did the songs get before you actually had a point where we can all get in a room together? Well, was it just sketches? There, there is a point where you can't do it anymore. I yeah. mean, it's like, here's, here's a cycle or here's the skeleton of this song. A lot of what we do on the floor is, you know, we'll figure out what riff really works well with another riff and then there's a there's a point where the cycle's done and the, there's nothing written after that. It's like, okay, what's gonna happen when Lars stops playing? What riff comes out of who, you know? That's a magical moment that you can't do on Zoom or, or yeah. there's quite a few of those things. Um, but just the joy of being together in a room yeah, and man. feeling each other's vibe. Um, 
you know, having uh, having Rob and Kirk with, you know, in that process for the first time was like, it took a little convincing, you know, Lars really loves when it's just him and I doing some of the writing stuff. And I said, I can't do that anymore. We need to change this up. We need some different energy. We need some, we need, we need all four of us in this room to, to create. So there was a lot of doors that opened up on this record, which I'm super grateful for. Cause you never know what nugget you're gonna stumble over, you know. Of course. You gotta go through a lot of mud to find a little piece of gold. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, be, be put in a, a situation where you can be spontaneous and creative on being in the moment, present, and waiting for that that one thing that comes down from the universe into your brain, through your heart, your fingers, and into your instrument, out the, out the amp, onto tape, and it's just almost perfectly formed. Yeah. I mean, those are or, those are the moments that most musicians live for. Of course. You know, and it, it just feels like the universe is really like you're having a conversation with the universe. And the connection I feel with the universe is amazing, you know, in that moment. It's just like two seconds ago I had nothing. Now I have something. Mm. And, you know, for me it's the beauty of creation. And this album it represents so many of those moments. And when I hear those moments, and I can hear them, you know, I hear a riff or solo or whatever, you know, and I'll go, oh yeah, I remember that moment. I remember that moment of spontaneity. And not just with me, you know, with Rob or James or, or with Lars. It's like, and it's a special thing, bro. I, I agree. You can't buy it. No, I don't <laughs> you, know. you can't force it. You can't steal it. <laughs> a lot of people don't want to talk about it either. That's the interesting it's thing. It's sacred. It is sacred, and you know, there's a superstition that that's surrounding it. But I don't. I, you know, I believe that it's so strong. It's stronger than any superstition or anything. You know, when that that energy comes through you, it comes through you, and it, it's it's definite. It's absolute. It's fundamental. You yeah. know, it's it's everything right there. I remember watching you headline Hellfest last year and in the middle of Fate of Black, you did a, a really powerful speech about mental health and about suicide. And I remember at the time thinking that it was so moving because it is something that has touched everybody that we know. And I feel like it's, it's something that no one really normally would speak about when we were growing up. You know, guys, no, you don't talk about that. You just hold it in and to squish it down. And, and I found it so important. And mm. I feel like this record has so many moments where obviously the, the, the title is, is a reference to that and about our foundational years of about growing up for those 18 years. And it makes us the per person that we are for, for better or for worse that we, that we have to deal with. I just wanted to say it was mm. super important that you did that. And I think that those moments on this record are beautiful. Thank you. And yeah, that's it's like a myth. We're supposed to be a certain way or have it all figured out or whatever. We don't. I, I don't. No. I'm just a dude up there in front of a bunch of people, and when something needs to come out of me, it does. I, 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 I'm in a great position to do that. But, you know, if it's a human experience, we should be able to talk about it. As simple as that. And, you know, nothing really should be taboo, you know, because we're experiencing it and relating to each other with it, with especially with fears is, is always yeah. helpful. It, you know, it has to start somewhere. Yes. Someone has to pick up that burning hot coal and go, oh wait, it's not, it's not a burning hot coal. I thought it was a burning hot, it's just a rock. Look at, look everyone, it's just a rock. Mm -hmm. You know, the process has to start. James is starting the process. You know, he's throwing it out there. Hopefully other people pick up on it. And James, he's showing courage on a level that you just, you don't see from guys these days, you know? And his courage is all about just like being vulnerable. Yeah. And standing behind that with both feet on the ground and saying, this is, this is what I am, you know? Warts and all. And that's what we all should be doing, you know? I agree. 
I've heard you talk about um, being of service as an artist, and, and you know that role was taken up in 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 the past, but under other names. But it, the idea about somebody going out and facing the abyss and bringing something back for everybody else to then work with and and deal with, and I think that, that music is is any art, but music in particular for me is is a huge part of that, and I think that. Um, that's what this record's like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, thank you, brother. You know, not to get too like you know weird or poetic or anything, but too late. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's, I, I do that all the time when I sing. Uh, the, the lyrics, you know, are, 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 are like the sacrificial lamb. Hmm. You know, there will be blood. There will be blood. <laughs> Wait, and then very quickly, then that brings me on to, <laughs> on that note, uh, touring. Yeah, because the tour's about to start here. Amsterdam, I think it's the first day, right, isn't it? In a week or so. And then you've got the two nights at Download as well, which is really important, I think. It's amazing. I know that you did that with Danny's festivals in the US. Um, so I'm so glad that it's happening here in the UK, mm. rather. How, how do you feel about, about touring these uh, songs? And you're really excited about that? You must be, right? Well, yeah, sure, obviously new stuff. We want to get out there and play some of that stuff, test it, throw it out there, see what comes back, you know? Mm -hmm what people pick up on. I got the best seat in the house. I get to see it happen. I get to throw the, that stuff out there. What melodies affect people? What sing-along parts are they gonna pick up on? Yeah. It's so exciting to see what happens with a new song out there. And yeah, we get to do two nights. So we get to do a lot of songs. The more of the challenge is, you know, what are we not gonna play this night? What are we not gonna play that night, you know? Yeah. So. We do have a lot of songs to choose from. We're excited about that. And we get to, it's a great problem to have. Great problem. You're listening to the Radio One Rock Show, me, Daniel P. Carter. Tracks you just heard then were Screaming Suicide, Shadows Follow, and Lux Eterna, all from the album 72 Seasons, which is out now. As briefly discussed at the end there, when I was talking to James and Kirk, the band are about to start their M72 World Tour, which is going to see the band playing like two nights in every city that they visit, with each is like a no-repeat weekend, two completely different sets, which is what they're also going to be doing at Download Festival, Thursday the 8th of June and Saturday the 10th, which is going to be amazing. A portion of the proceeds from every ticket sold go to Metallica's charity, All Within My Hands. Since 2017, the band have raised nearly $13 million towards career and technical education programs in the US, combating food insecurity and towards disaster relief efforts worldwide. A beautiful thing. So in this second part, uh, I got to speak to Robert and Lars, and we speak about basically like creativity and interpreting the lyrics in different ways. Getting back to playing shows after the pandemic. Reactions to the album. Working with Greg Fiddleman as well, who produced the record and has worked with the band on several other of their albums. But I started off by asking the guys about the meaning of the album title because obviously 72 Seasons, as mentioned when I was talking to James, is about those 18 years where our lives kind of where our whole personalities are formed. Here's what Lars had to say about it. To me, you know, going back to the 72 seasons, you know, any type of opportunity to put something out there that can be interpreted in as many different ways as possible is something that we support and encourage. And I think that, um, I guess, as I get older, and people are very uh, uh, generous, they say, you know, do you agree with that? Do you disagree with that? Is that a, a fair statement? I go, listen, yeah. it's music. And so any of it should be interpreted however way you see fit. And I, I guess I would like to even go, you know, maybe, you know, today you'll interpret it differently than you will tomorrow. And next Tuesday, or you'll hear it a, another way. Run with it. That's what yeah. it's, it's there for. And I think also... Uh, you know, James came up with the, the whole concept of the 72 seasons, but I think that what struck the rest of us so instantly about that title was that it was so 
subjective in that anybody, you know, what is what are the first 18 years of your life represent to how who you become later? And I think that's so exciting that it can be that abstract, that subjective, and that open to individual interpretation. That's when I think creativity is at its most exciting. Well, that's you know, the nature the, of great yeah. art, isn't it? That it is a subjective thing, but I also think the beauty of it is is the fact that you have those moments where everybody, as you've just said, everyone can ha has had an entirely different life, but there will be, at one of your shows, that one connecting thing, which is your band, which is why music is so special. And no more importantly now, post the uncertainty and the darkness of those couple of years, I think, is that more vital and, and more important than ever, you know? And I, and I found that as soon as shows opened up, it was an incredibly celebratory thing. Yeah, I really felt last year, I mean, we've obviously uh, toured Europe a lot in the last 40 plus years. Last year when we did the 15 festivals, there was such a sense of like life and rebirth and here we are again and you could just feel like you know i was in madrid for two three days we were in paris for a few days um we went to prague i mean you could just feel the, the streets were like alive uh it was the same thing even down in south america you know in argentina and these places it was like everything felt elevated and you know, like escalated you know there's a spirit the celebration um, and it just felt really good. So I, I would say that, you know, it's healing. I mean, people are, are appreciative and also feel like they're, they're receiving something that's giving them vigor and purpose and, uh, you know, making them feel good. Yeah. That's very powerful. It's been super fun in the last few months you know there's that period from when you finish a record till everybody else in the world gets it where it's kind of like okay there's you know 20 people that have heard it yeah. and it's really cool and you're kind of listening to it and you know i'm i'm a really big metallica fan also and so to be able to remove myself from the creative process of actually making it and just sitting there in my car or you know i'm working out and going like that's pretty cool uh, and kind of having a smile on your face. Now it's out. Now, you know, we, we're gonna play some of these songs, obviously. What is that then gonna do to the to, to relationship with the songs? What's it gonna do to the relationship with the record? You know, so again, you know, when we sit here again, five years from now and talk about the next record, I'll have a better, um, a, a better understanding of where 72 Seasons fits into it. Uh, the one thing that seems to be a common reaction from yourself uh, and, and everybody else who's been generous enough to, to talk about it, and I've gotten you know texts and messages from people who I respect and, and friends and other musicians and bands, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is that people are definitely, uh, I think you used the word vitality, uh, people are picking up on on the energy and the relentlessness. And I think that that energy, you know, when I hear this record a couple of years from now, it would surprise me if I wouldn't still hear that in it. Do I you know agree. What I, mean? I think that vulnerability is the thing that tempers the vitality as well. And I think that's a, it's a really difficult thing to balance in it. And it just. And I agree with both of you. This album to me is a very powerful statement in a lot of different ways and it, it seems to resonate with, uh, you know, everybody. I, I get people asking me about, how'd you play the bass on this song? Did yeah. you use a pick? Did you use your fingers? Uh, which is great, because it means that they're they're dissecting the song, because yeah. they can't help it, you know. The snare sounds, it sounds insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, thank you. This is what happens when you make records with Greg Fiddleman 15 years. I don't think I ever had at any point, from day one to the last day, ever had a conversation with him about the snare sound. Literally, like, yeah. it was just, because now it's second nature, so you don't even have to communicate where you want or expect or wish for it to go. It's all, you know, 
the snare sound I'll go back. Yeah, I worked really hard on that for months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so exactly. All I got is He was the, tweaking the snare. Right, yeah, yeah. um, you know. I sat for hours every day with my drum key, man. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, what a, a crazy cool position to be able to make music with people that you know so well and that you trust and that you don't have to go through this kind of uh, getting to know you process, you know? Yeah, there's definitely been more of that from, you know, uh, people that are musicians and uh, and they usually wouldn't go out of their way to, to share that appreciation at, at this level, you know? So that's also rewarding too. Thank you to James, Kirk, Lars and Rob from Metallica. Just fuck today. The tracks were all from 72 Seasons, Too Far Gone, Inamorata, before that Screaming Suicide Shadows Follow and Lux Eterna. The album 72 Seasons is out now. The band's European tour starts this week in Amsterdam and they will be here in June for two nights at Download Festival. 